Oh my god, hey AD, welcome to my crib. Just joking, this isn't made by AD. But anyway, it's a studio tour. Many of you will have seen selected views of my studio, aka this one is the most common. But that's selected for YouTube only because the other corners are pretty messy and I essentially avoid filming in them. But not today. Today is all access. It's a studio tour, all the nooks and crannies, all the random corners of things where uh, there's just stuff in them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna show you. Never really spoken about my equipment in any great detail um, and kind of about how I use my space. So today's the day. Before we get into it, a little bit of history about the space, I suppose. The studio that I'm in used to be a lime store apparently or a rum store for um, King Henry's ship when they used to come into the harbour. I'm right on the River Thames so I get a really cool view and I have some cool history of the space as well. I like to think that the space was haunted um, although I've been here for six years and so far no ghosts. Remains to be seen though. I think they're friendly if there are any ghosts. Anyway, so I moved here in 2018. Before that, I was in a pretty gross studio. I have a whole video about that, which I'll link in the uh, description for you. But I'm, I was stoked to be here. When I first moved in, I was obviously very enamored immediately by the big window. It's um, kind of the most special, most breathtaking thing about this space and about this building, really. And also the high ceilings. I think the high ceilings mean that I can have a lot of stuff in here, which there is, and it doesn't feel super claustrophobic, which is nice. I'm, I don't really make use of the height, but I kind of am able to breathe in this space, which is really nice. I wanna talk a little bit about the way that the studio functions. The way that I kind of use it is based sort of on Bernard Leach's um, diagram in his book, A Potter's Book. This is it here. This is his plan of a small pottery, apparently. So uh, according to the master, Bernard, our Bernie boy, uh, it basically flows. So that's kind of how I set mine up, but I'm in a smaller space than he's kind of suggested. I am a potter in central London. So I don't, I do have a big space, but it's not a huge space. So I kind of have set it up how it kind of is suggested in here, but only kind of. Basically, the whole process starts here, which is where I store all my clay and where I prepare my clay. This is some clay that actually is waiting to be prepared, so um, quite good prop styling from me. So I prepare all of my clay here and then it goes over this way. <laughs> this is a crazy shot, but it goes to the wheels and then I make my piece is here and then it goes on to the next position. It goes over to the shelves, which is behind you right now. Anything from the wheel then comes this way to the shelf. And this is the greenware shelf. So anything that needs drying, anything that needs finishing, anything that is finished and waiting for the kiln, it goes here on this shelf. Then we go backwards a little bit. This whole shelf system actually is a little bit back and forwards. What would Bernie say? He probably wouldn't like that but it works for me. So we go from here to the kilns, which are that way, and I'll talk about the kilns in a minute. Then anything that comes out of the kilns either is unloaded onto this table here to be glazed, or will go onto this shelf here, which is the bisque shelf. Unfortunately, <laughs> annoyingly for this shelf and this sort of cycle system, uh, my glazers are opposite me right now um, on shelves over there. It's fine, it obviously doesn't mean anything it's just kind of annoying for me trying to explain this beautiful cyclical situation that happens in the studio when we're going right through it and making a semicircle. whatever the bisque shelf is as you can see quite full at the moment so anything that is waiting to be glazed will go here sometimes I'll like draw patterns on something ready to be glazed but I don't have the energy to do it or it's just kind of I don't know I'm not ready to glaze it yet, whatever it is, it just, it sits here for a bit. And then once it is glazed, it goes back in the kiln. Or this shelf is for glazed, unfired bisque ware, and that is where things go once they've been glazed, obviously, but they didn't fit in the kiln or um, the kiln 
ha hasn't got a firing schedule or whatever. So the stuff that you can see here, obviously it's a little bit kind of spotted around this shelf. It's because I've just put a firing on and kind of used most of this up now. So I will need to glaze some more of this stuff before I can fire again because this is not gonna, ah, uh, maybe it will. It might fill up a kiln but I like to be as efficient as possible, so that's why I always have like little pieces of bisqueware waiting to be glazed, just in case. After these pieces have gone into the kiln and then been unloaded, they'll usually get unloaded onto the little table next to the kilns, and then they kind of get sorted out and they get put onto the shelves to my right here. Uh, these shelves are finished pieces, so they are ready to be sold or are waiting to go out. And this is my little packing area, so these pieces are actually waiting to go out. They're pieces that people have purchased and they're waiting to be wrapped up. This is this area, it's like a dry area for finished pieces only. In this area I have like packing materials and my printer and like stationery and stuff. So this is kind of the end of the process and then they go off into the world to start their journey as pots of the world. So now we've come to the final part of the circle before we start making some new things again. So let's talk about the wheels and the way that we've set these up. So I've been sharing my studio for about a year. I had a job um, a little while ago where, which meant that I wasn't here very often. I was here maybe two days a week if I was lucky. So it made, didn't really make sense for this space just to kind of be empty and sad and alone. So um, my friend Ali was looking for a studio and I thought it'd be nice to have a friend in here. So she moved in. So this is her wheel and the wheel that you can't quite see right there is my wheel. And we've set them up by the window because this is the nicest space. This is the nicest spot in the whole studio and like this is our office, you know, this is like our desk. So. We spend most of our time here, so we want to be uh, looking outside and having a nice little time while we're doing it. I have also set it up like this because um, obviously I'm making YouTube videos and this is a really nice shot. It's natural light behind the camera there and uh, I can throw on the wheel and talk to the camera and whatever. So this is kind of the hero shot or whatever and so it's why it's permanently kind of set up like this. It just makes it easier for filming. So my wheel is a Rhoda HMT 500 and I really like it. I bought it off Gumtree, off a old pottery school and I have just kind of DIY'd it with a piece of wood in front of me because while the wheel is really good, the design of it is not that great. There's no space to fit your water or your tools or anything on the wheel, it's really weird. So yeah, I've needed to DIY this little solution and it works well. Next to me, I have my Reclaim. I'll show you this properly in a second, but it's really nice having it right next to the wheel. And I have kind of the tools that I need, mostly uh, in these little jugs with hooks that go on the side of my wheel. The other, my throwing tools that I don't really use for anything else and so they just live here, as well as my trimming tools too. Behind me, I have um, my tile bat system. So if I am making loads of cups or something that needs small bats, then I just grab here, they're just beside me. These are the Hartley & Noble tile bat system and I really like it. I've had the, these tiles for years and they are in great condition, so highly recommend you can't see in the shot. But behind me on the shelves, I have some bigger bats for bigger pieces as well. And I just kind of set them up here next to me. In front of me, I will set up my clay and my water and all my tools and things ready to throw. And if Ellie isn't here, then I use her wheel for my wear board. And if she is, then I use this space. We've also set up a step stool right in between both wheels because we love climbing out and going outside because you know that's the joy of this huge window that opens up to the street. It's really nice having lunch outside or just having a little break. If people buy pots off me and come to pick them up, then I often will like hand them out the window. It's really cute. It's a nice thing to kind of be in your own space, but also have an opportunity to talk to the community. And that's something that's really important to me. So it's, it's really nice having that there. It's also frosted windows though, so like at night time if I'm throwing um, or working at the wheel and I don't feel like creeped out by people potentially being able to see in and I can't see out, you know, it's nice to have it frosted and just a little bit more private when I fancy it. Let's go uh, just next door, right over there to my kiln. So these are my two kilns and I 
adore them. They're my favourite thing. They're both kilns from a place called Northern Kilns and it's like a family business that's been going for a really long time. I bought my little kiln here off eBay. It was my first big pottery purchase and it's 30 years old which is incredible um, and then I loved using it so much that I bought another one but it's kind of it's a big it's big little sister, I suppose. They're, they're really good kilns. They have lots of insulation. So this kiln is currently 400 degrees and I'm touching it and it just isn't hot. It's great. This kiln's undergoing a little bit of maintenance at the moment. Poor baby needs some new elements. So I am working on that. This kiln is currently firing, as I've just said. So we've got the kiln gods watching over. We have this one here. This is a snake which I made for this kiln. Uh, it's it was smoking a cigarette, but it's quit because it fell off the kiln and the cigarette broke off. Honestly, smoke-free 2024. Go off, little snake. You are doing really well. This little kiln god I made for my other kiln that I had in between these two. This is for that kiln. It's a random little guy, a little Lego head maybe. And then this one here, which I made years ago for this kiln here is uh, a girly who doesn't take shit from anyone. She's got like hot tattoos, literally like kiln related. So we love her and they look after every firing. When we turn the kiln on, they go on there. <laughs> so some boring stuff about the kilns. They're both single phase kilns. So I don't have reface here, which is fine. I don't need it. This kiln draws like 39 amps, I think. and the studio has 40 amps so it's good i can't fire both kilns at once so they are connected to a cooker switch an isolator switch um, and i just plug them in whichever one i need to fire i don't have any heating in here so in the winter time these guys keep me warm and i love them for it i love them for it they are both top loaders so that means that i can always see down on top of my pots and decide they're too close in a firing which is nice right next to the kilns is my sink it was a real draw for me when i was moving in here that it had a built-in sink it's fairly rare i think that you can find a studio that allows kilns and has a sink i'm thanking my lucky stars for that obviously i work with clay so i installed a clay trap underneath the sink but I'm not a very good plumber and the last time I emptied the clay trap, I've installed it funny and it leaks now. So I just don't use it. <laughs> I don't use the sink at all. I just use a bucket in here and any clay that fills up, I put in my reclaim. And there's a drain down here, just underneath the table, which I empty any water into. And like the system works quite well. It means that I catch most of the clay before it goes anywhere and because the sink leaks it means that no clay is going down there so win-win. Underneath I have these quite ugly looking under bed storage things and they just hold bits you know stuff that you need buckets that don't really fit anywhere else and tea towels and cleaning supplies things like that they just go under here. Obviously the kilns the aforementioned kilns behind me being right next to the sink has made me feel a little uncomfortable so I installed this board one day it's just it's just a piece of wood that I painted white and I've literally tied it onto the side of the sink it's kind of a janky setup but it doesn't really need to do anything apart from like make me feel better about using water next to an electrical appliance so I'm happy that they are kind of separated even if it's just a bit of wood, it just means that it doesn't splash or whatever. Okay, so background to the shelves. I thought I would just talk to you a little bit more about the shelves. They're just IKEA shelves and they are great by themselves, but I've kind of DIY'd them with my husband a few years ago. We put these little brackets or whatever, they're just like little tiny pieces of wood, which means that we can slide wear boards in and out. So if I'm over by the pottery wheel and I've filled this up with pots, then I can just come over here and slide it in and then I can grab another board do the same thing and fill the shelf up and that has been an amazing system it's worked so well it was very easy to do we just literally screwed pieces of wood at regular intervals along the shelves and yeah it's worked very well the shelves are freestanding shelves they are attached at the top so that they don't topple over although now I've said that it's made me feel a bit sick that it's gonna happen anyway 
yeah, they're great. They're just wooden shelves. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Kind of using the rule of having greenware, bisqueware and glazed bisqueware has worked really well. Um, when Ali moved in, we had to change it a little bit because it's quite limited space for two people. So it used to be greenware and then bisqueware and like glazed bisqueware or whatever. Like I would kind of use the middle shelf differently. And then that last shelf was finished pieces. Um, so now we have the shelf on the wall next to us, which is all finished pieces and this is all work in progress. The one um, over there is a wider shelf and I haven't done this, but we kind of planned to, but it doesn't seem to need it really so far. This is, I don't know, like it's the finished area, but it is also kind of a messy area. So we don't necessarily see this corner that often in my videos, but this is my shelf of stuff and that's Ali's shelf of stuff. I have a little bit of stationery and stuff down there. Ali has some of her bits and yeah, works well. Maybe one day we'll put some extra shelves in because it is a little bit of limited space, but these shelves are deeper than the work in progress shelves. So like it kind of works, you know, it's all good. And then we have these shelves here. I put them up when I moved in really early and to be honest, I was gonna use them like the wear board system on the other side, but it didn't really work that well because these are too high and a wear board laden with wet pots is really heavy. So it just never was really gonna work. It's fine because this system works well for glaze materials and bats and tools. And on the other side, I have printers and books and stationery and stuff. It's just using the wall space in the best way possible. But the system itself that we intended didn't really end up working out. A really good bookshelf filled with really good books. Just so good. Couldn't be a better book. <laughs> good author. There's a little communal kitchen in the studios that I'm part of, so I don't need to worry about a microwave or a kettle or uh, a fridge or anything like that. It's all, it's all here. And communal toilets as well, so I uh, don't need to sort any of that out by myself, so that's nice. And then lastly, I just want to talk about all of the surfaces in the studio. So all of the surfaces that I work on, I made. Um, this table was made from an old big pallet that I found and I added some legs and added a worktop. And the bench along the side of the wall and the one that's next to the between the wheels and the kiln are made from scaffolding pipe and connectors and just MDF wood that I've placed on top. So underneath this table, it's a bit of a tip to be honest, but we have lots of stuff. We have packaging materials, we have some big containers that we take to markets and some plaster, a fan when it gets too hot, things like that. Just like stuff that you need that just needs to go somewhere. Along the side here, we have the clay, which I knew when I was building this that I was gonna need a big amount of space for clay. Obviously, it's probably my most important material in the whole studio, so I needed a space for a lot of it. I didn't anticipate that it would be able to hold as much clay as it does, but it currently holds almost a ton of clay, which is insane. The middle shelf is for glazes, so we have our buckets of glaze that we've made and um, any glaze materials and that works fantastically too. So we have some dried materials stored in these tubs here and my glazes are at the top. And, and then the next one along is the packaging materials area. This area is always a bit of a mess. It's always kind of the dumping ground for stuff, unfortunately, because it's the space that's, I suppose, the cleanest. So any admin kind of goes over there to be dealt with. When I need to pack pots or I need to send boxes out, whatever, then that's the area that I use. And it, yeah, it's great. I have boxes of stationery and camera equipment and stuff that I take to markets, things like that underneath the bench. And there's a really narrow shelf as well for uh, like newsprint or tissue paper. And then the top, I can either pack boxes or wrap pots or store pots that need wrapping. I think the good thing about custom making furniture is that you can pretty much do whatever you want for the space. The other table that's next to the wheels, underneath there's no shelf. And so I can have my Reclaim, which is on wheels underneath, and that has been incredible because that's too heavy to store anywhere else um, and to lift up. So having it on casters has been great. On the shelf above it, 
I have all of my plaster bats that I've made and the moulds kind of go under there and just a few other like bits that you need for making that you don't use all the time that's kind of stored there as well. The tables and benches are all kind of multi-functional spaces. The bench above the clay is kind of the wedging area and the clay area. The table is kind of for hand building and for glazing and this ends up being a bit of a storage area and obviously if you feel like working somewhere else you're allowed to. There's no hard rules here but that's just kind of how it has ended up being. The middle of the bench has become a weird area so we've got a slab roller which we use fairly often but then behind it we have um, RIP dead and dying plants. It's not a bad space for them it's just I'm not a very good mother to plants I really would like to work on that. Maybe I just need to get some plants that are sort of alive and um, will make me feel better. It means that the slab roller is kind of a in-between thing for the dry area and the wet area if that makes sense and yeah it's a weird use of space because it is, you know, like high use real estate is a bench, but it seems to be fine. Guys, that concludes the tour. That's it. I hope that you have enjoyed it because it's been quite fun showing you around. If you enjoyed this and you want to see other people's studios, then comment below people um, who have studios who you think I should go and visit because I think that would be a really fun series. I'll be back again next week with another video. In the meantime, you can follow me on the socials. I'm at may.ceramics on TikTok and Instagram. If you want to support me and my channel, then you can buy my book. It's called Hand Built. It's lovely. It will help you on your journey of hand building if you are interested in getting into that. And you can also sign up to my Domestica course, which is a hand building course as well. It takes you through sort of a formal course, a step-by-step -step learning of how to hand build a cool bottle. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me. As always, I will see you again very soon. Mwah. Goodbye. I love you.